screen. Let me share my screen. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our nursing research colloquium. Um, and we are going to have presentations this afternoon on needs assessment of community clients in Kurokanahao by uh, Ms. Barbie Lim and uh, representing her group members, as well as level of compliance in infection prevention and control measures of staff nurses. Um, to be presented by O.J. Jimenez uh, and as a representative of his group also. So without further ado, we will start with our um, prayer. Remember that you're in the most holy presence of God, and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Shea. Good afternoon. Okay, so we are actually going to have this afternoon's uh, research colloquium. Because of the pandemic, we are actually having concerns, not being able to see each other. We used to do this in one place wherein we eat together and we enjoy at the same time after the presentation of all our um, research outputs uh, made by different groups. So this afternoon, we are going to have this colloquium uh, with our two brave souls representing the group as group leaders, okay, um, Mr. O.J. Jimenez and Ms. Barbara Myla Ruth Lim um, for the College of Nursing's uh, 2020 Research Colloquium. Uh, to start our afternoon's activity, I would like to I would like you all to welcome Dr. Tony and Chica for our uh, opening remarks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Dr. Tony. Is my audio clear, Doc Shai? Now, yes, you are clear now. 
Okay. So one of the best part, uh, parts of, always of research is when the proponent or the researcher is starting to disseminate or um, cascades the results or the findings of his or her research. And that is what we are going to do this afternoon. Especially that we are all aware that uh, the research output made by the group of the CHN was our basis or is our basis in our community health programs that we are currently doing with our level two and level three students. We, have, we are starting to utilize the findings of the research studies made by these very, uh, very good researcher, uh, researchers. To mention Dr. Jo Cadena, Ms. Barbie Lim, Ms. Dora Ontiveros, and Ms. Stella uh, Villa. And with that, the college is very grateful to have you and uh, for, for your research output. Also for um, Sir O.J. Jimenez, no? the results of his study is very useful, especially that we have already level three students who are about to be exposed in the OR. And of course, they have been exposed already to the DR or nursery. The value of compliance to sterility and to value the importance of following hospital protocols. So with that, I would like again to congratulate the two presenters on behalf of the two teams, Sir OJ and Miss Barbie. On behalf of Dean Ivy, would like also to congratulate uh, Dr. Shaila Trajera for facilitating this research colloqu colloquium. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first research colloquium. Thank you. Okay, let us give a hand of applause, virtual hand of applause to Dr. Winnie. Thank you very much, Dr. Winnie. Um, Thank you for all the support you're giving to the research activities as well as to all the officers, Ms. Ming, uh, and all the faculty, Dr. Jo, Dr. An. So without further ado, I know you're very busy. We will start with our presentation of research results. And to start with, I would like to ask um, our um, first present presenter, Mr. O.J. Jimenez, who just recently graduated in his master in nursing program. Uh, OJ is, is with Sarah and um, another group meet uh, in this study. And as the team leader, he is actually presenting the paper in uh, favor of everyone in the group. Okay, OJ, Sir OJ. Thank you, Doc Shai. I'll just share my screen. So good afternoon once again, um, colleagues, mentors, and professors. I'll just share my screen. All right. Millions of people affected, high costs for the patients, prolonged hospital stays, long-term disability, antimicrobial resistance, suffering, audio. or worse death. These are just few of numerous effects. One moment. All right. Millions of people affected, high costs for the patients, prolonged hospital stays, long-term disability, antimicrobial resistance, suffering, or worse death. These are just few of numerous effects of healthcare-related infections. Numerous studies were already published about infection prevention and control, but my question is, what about our colleagues here in our area? Thank you, Dr. Charlotte Trajera, which is also my STEAM research advisor, for this rare opportunity and experience to present our graduate school research paper. Dear colleagues, guests, 
I'm O.G. Jimenez, a part-time clinical instructor from College of Nursing, here to discuss a research paper entitled Level of Compliance in Infection Prevention Control Measures of Staff Nurses in Selected Hospital Areas. For the background of the study, infection prevention and control measure is actually a practical and evidence-based approach that prevents patients and healthcare workers from being harmed by avoidable infections. These um, unnecessary harms or include death can also save money, reduction of spread of um, antimicrobial resistance, supports high quality integrated people-centered health services. According to WHO, preventing HAIs has never been more important. Most standard of procedure have been cased on the concepts released by WHO and Center for Disease Control. A number of countries released a data stating that each year, hundreds of millions of patients globally are estimated to be affected by HAI. Several folds higher in low and middle income countries, including the Philippines, than in high income ones. There is also now a worldwide consensus that urgent action is needed to prevent and control the spread of antimicrobial resistant organisms and in healthcare, effective infection prevention and control or IPC is one solution. The burden of HAI is actually um, caused sometimes by just a simple uh, avoidance or non-compliance to hand washing. Studies have showed that uh, facilitators and barriers to infection control have found that suboptimal dissemination of hand hygiene, high nursing turnover, clinical time constraints, resources, and sometimes forgetfulness, ignorance, high workload, or the fear of uh, skin irritation caused by latex gloves have caused the non-compliance or poor compliance in hygiene or hand hygiene. Each country has different geographical composition and is facing its own unique healthcare problems. And of course, here in the Philippines, even though we want to adhere to international standards, but budget deficits and corruption hinder the full implementation of international or global guidelines. Well, you can really relate, even the uh, field health problems right now. This study now aims to, or uh, this uh, study is differs from other study because it focuses on compliance of staff nurses at present time where there is an ongoing disease outbreak in a local setting where there is insufficient provision of equipment and facilities. Remember the all eruption that have caused the uh, insufficient supplies and hoarding of surgical masks earlier this year. So these have actually uh, caused a wave or a ripple of effect to the succeeding or uh, during the pandemic because of lack of surgical mass in the first part or during the month of March. Currently, we're experiencing, as declared by WHO, a disease outbreak all around the globe caused by NCOV. Previously, we called it NCOV. Now it's COVID-19. Uh, it's called a global health emergency because it could spread to countries that are unprepared. Well, uh, if you can consider Philippines unprepared, then so be it. So this study will determine the level of compliance in infection control and prevention measures, practices of staff nurses in selected areas in a hospital. So this study seeks to answer the following questions. First, of course, is to determine the profile of our nurses or the staff nurses or participants according to sex, age, unit of assignment, and length of service, and determine their level of compliance based on the following guidelines, which include Disinfection, sterilization, hand hygiene, isolation protocol, pneumonia, and other airborne infection and measures, infection control measures, and of course, the use of PPE. Third is to determine if there's a significant relationship between level of compliance to profile variables as mentioned earlier. And lastly, what are the common suggestions in improving the level of practice in infection prevention and control measures in terms of the following IPC? guidelines. So what is the significance of this study? First and foremost, it will help the hospital administration in reviewing their current hospital policy and implementation of rules and practices in infection control. It will also help remind the nurses 
to comply to the uh, infection control measures, especially during this pandemic. It will also help the patients be further protected from nosocomial infections. And for the future researches, it will serve as a guide and reference for future researches to be conducted, may it be for replication, for the improvement, or any related study. Last but not the least, also for the BSM professors, it may help them in their discussion related to infection control. This may serve as their source of reference as they tackle local issues in nosocomial infections, which is very relevant in today's um, epidemic or pandemic, sorry. For the theoretical and conceptual framework, this study is based or anchored in the envir environmental theory focusing on hygiene by Florence Nightingale. This was actually uh, explained in her book, what it is and what it is not. So though the, this theory was pioneering at that time, it was created the principles it applies are timeless. Okay, so the focus of nursing in this model or model is to alter the patient's environment in order to affect the change in his or her health, gradually uh, promote optimal environment or improvement for the body of the patient to actually heal. Okay, we also know that uh, Nightingale has, um, uh, or according to some studies, that hand hygiene is the single most effective means of preventing horizontal transmission of infection among hospital, given that the fact that in addition to keeping hands clean, um, it is also imperative to maintain a clean patient environment. This includes keeping hospital equipment sanitized after patient care and in between patient use. Much of the hospital equipment uh, today should be sanitized after patient care and in between patient use. Based on I think those theories of cleanliness, standards have been developed to, to I mean standards have been developed to standardize sanitation and prevent HAIs, which includes standard contact droplet and airborne precaution. These protocols took Nightingale standards and, and evolved them to accommodate the healthcare system today. Now, in this study, we've uh, included the two age groups. First is the young adults with age 20 to 30 and the older adults with age 30 years and one month to 65 years old. For the sex, the difference in male appearance to policies may also be determined. Also, the difference or the relationship between ICU ward and ER to level compliance may also be established. And to determine if there are differences or um, similarities in how the length of service affects the level of compliance, and at the very least, verify the awareness of the junior and senior staff nurses when it comes to IPC um, compliance or protocols. So in the advent of disease outbreak, it is assumed that this global epidemic may have some direct or indirect effect to the local or the, to the compliance of, to the level of compliance of healthcare workers, especially here in the Philippines, even here in the province. As determined from multiple guidelines released by WHO and Center for Disease Control, as well as book references in infection prevention and control. So as mentioned earlier, these are the following guidelines that have been included in the study. This is actually the illustration of the relationship of the profile of the staff nurses or the participants in this study uh, to the level of compliance in infection prevention control practices under framework of under the framework of uh, Florence Nightingale's environmental theory. The hypothe hypothesis uh, statement is for this study is um, there is no significant relationship between the level of compliance of staff nurses to profile variables as a whole and when a group according to sex, unit of assignment, age, or length of service. For the research method, we actually used or um, descriptive quantita quantitative study was used in this um, research using modified researchers made survey questionnaire that has been adaptive, adapted from Center for Disease Control and WHO guidelines. The goal of this uh, instrument is to determine the profile of the staff nurses, as mentioned, 
as well as determine the frequency of their compliance towards different infection control measures indicated in the questionnaire. So the tool sought to answer the question whether or not the independent variables affect the level of compliance by the staff nurses in infection control in selected areas of the said hospital. The participants of the study were actually determined through non-probability convenience sampling classified according to unit of assignment as endorsed by the chief nurse of the hospital according to ward, ICU, and ER with a total population of 40. The research instrument first part as mentioned earlier, um, aim to determine the different profiles of staff nurses. A survey questionnaire was utilized to gather information among staff nurses on their level of compliance. And uh, Likert type, this is a, actually a Likert type questionnaire uh, with five options according to interpretation. So we have five or always, meaning they are more compliant with the standard or protocol. For the data gathering after um, receiving approval from the uh, chief of hospital, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and certification received from the ethics committee chair, the director of nursing of the hospital help uh, endorse the questionnaires to the nurses or staff nurses assigned in the wards ICU and ER. All right, so. This survey was actually conducted between February 19 to 21. And then, of course, the participants have answered the questionnaire. But before that, we also determined the validity of the instrument through um, a review by a jury of experts for them to determine if the questionnaire are suitable or not in gathering data for the study using a four-point scale based from the criteria set forth by Carter, B. Good, and Douglas. So we receive a validity score of 3.8, uh, which is interpreted as very good. Then for the reliability, we use Cronback Alpha encoded in SPSS. And the reliability score we have acquired is 0 0.906 or excellent. Statistical treatment or a computer processing was used in statistical computations through SPSS. And for the first problem, the researchers use frequency distribution statistics in determining social demographic profile of the participants. For problem number two, um, frequency and distribution was also used to determine the level of compliance according to the different areas in IPC. For problem number three, um, since the um, profile variable as a whole and variable group according to sex, age, unit, and length of servants. Since the data are, um, what do you call this, nominal or ordinal, uh, chi-square test for independence was used to determine if there is a significant relationship between two variables being tested. However, since the chi-square test was not valid if more than 20% of the cells have um, expected count less than five so the likelihood ratio was used instead to determine significance or if the table was two by two then the features exact test uh, was used okay so this is the um, scale of interpretation so now hypothesis hypothesis of no significant relationship was the rejected if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, highlighted values indicate significant relationship. If the relationship was significant, then the strength of relationship was determined based on the value of Kramer Vs. So based on this, okay? And lastly, the, for problem number four, the suggestions were summarized and tabulated, which will be, um, presented later. For ethical consideration, we have a court approval from the administrators and the ethics committee chair. And then the letter was attached to the questionnaire stating the purpose and nature of the study. And there's also an option for the participants to withdraw or indicate their name with the assurance of strict confidentiality. And 
no coercion or bribery was done to acquire sponsors. We've also included um, included a statement that the um, questionnaires or their answers um, will be kept, secured, or stored for up to two years and then will be discarded afterwards. For the results, according to the table number three, it illustrated that there were more female than male uh, at 65% compared to 35 in this uh, study. And in terms of the age, there were more young adults at 72.5% than compared or compared to older adults. For the unit of assignment, it is noted or it was noted that there were more uh, staff nurses who participated from ER department as compared to the ward and ICU. And as for the length of service, there were more staff nurses who had a clinical experience of six to 10 years with, um, with just uh, two participants with an experience of 16 years and above. For the level of compliance in disinfection and sterilization, it was noted that generally the staff nurses are highly compliant with disinfection and sterilization with more answers um, related to very often and always. For the hand hygiene, um, table five, hand washing revealed high level of compliance in question number four. I wash my hands for at least 15 seconds with 97.5 of participants stating that they always follow this guideline. All right. And then for table number six, it showed that in terms of alcohol-based hand hygiene, now we have to uh, establish that there is a difference between the hand washing using soap and water and then alcohol-based hand hygiene using, for example, um, alcohol gel, all right, or hand sanitizers. So for this part, the participants answered very often in all six questions, and one participant answered rarely in the first question, which is surprisingly perform hand hygiene before and after touching patients, given the um, importance of this procedure in preventing cross-contamination between the patients. For isolation protocol or precaution, 20% of participants answered sometimes and 40% answered very often. Across three questions, three and four, only less than a quarter answered always. And for the compliance and infection prevention control measures in pneumonia and other airborne, there were um, less compliance in terms of vaccination and N95 use given, well, this is uh, expected of a government hospital given the fact that um, flu vaccines or pneumonia vaccines are expensive as well as N95. So basically, um, well, this is quite a bit um, expected already. And for the use of PPE, the table nine revealed that a high number of participants unable to comply in use of PPE guidelines compared to other infection control measures with one over five participants answered never rarely and sometimes. Table 10 indicates high level compliance among participants. This goes to show that despite the barriers, the staff nurses were actually compliant to the IPC guidelines set by WHO and CDC. For the third objective, which is to determine the level of or the significant relationship between profile variables and level of compliance, we've noted that there is a significant, moderately strong relationship between unit of assignment and disinfection. And then there's a moderately strong um, significant relationship between unit of assignment and length of service compared or in relation to hand washing, while the others, there's no significance. For isolation precaution, there's the moderately strong relationship again with the unit of assignment as compared or in relation to isolation protocol or precaution. And then there's a moderately weak significant relationship between unit of assignment 
and then the pneumonia and airborne control measures. Last but not the least, there's moderately strong re significant relationship between unit of assignment and the use of PPE. So for the sex, age, and lack of service, the, there is no significant relationship. So we have to remember that the unit of assignment included ICU. So of course, there's a big difference of dynamic in terms of um, first and foremost, the nurse to patient ratio where in there's a maximum of one is two or one is to one nurse to patient ratio in the ICU as compared to ER and um, the ward. And for the common suggestion, among the staff nurses in table 16, it included provision of negative and positive pressure isolation rooms, which is very important in today's um, pandemic, as well as increased supply related to hand hygiene and PPE. It was also suggested that uh, placing of hand hygiene or hand washing facility in convenient areas in the hospital. So in summary, all right, in summary, there were more female than male, more than three quarters were young adults, more participants were from ER with varying, varying length of service, but most have worked between six to 10 years. And based on computed frequency, the result is that there is high level compliance of staff nurses to IPC guidelines. And for SPS S chi-square test findings, there's a significant relationship between participants' unit of assignment and length of and level of compliance in all IPC measures. And the relationship is generally moderately strong. However, there is no significant relationship between the profiles, sex, age, and length of service to the majority of level of compliance to the guidelines or with the guidelines in IPC. Infrastructures like provisions, isolation rooms, and hygiene area were the most common suggestions. And the participants assigned in ICU were more compliant. So we would be more surprised if they were not compliant as compared to uh, where, um, everything is fast paced. And in conclusion, the 40 participating staff nurses showed high level of compliance in IPC. And though the technique is their provision of isolation room, supply of PPE, accessibility of hand hygiene may have affected the general level of compliance among participants. So in addition, the staff nurses that or the high nurse patient ratio may also be barrier in strict compliance of staff nurses. So in recommendation, hospital administration may need to um, we need to, for example, allocate or if budget allows increased supply of PPE, if there is, consider allocating location of hand hygiene areas, review the policies related to IPC, of course, uh, in-house training for all staff nurses, and um, promote disease awareness campaign and health teaching to the patients. For staff nurses, of course, mastery of IPC um, guidelines and vigilance. For the patients, it, the recommendation includes knowing their rights, reviewing cough etiquette and respiratory hygiene. Of course, be considerate with the other patients, especially if they're located in the ward. For the future researches, this study may serve as basis for future researches, including various in compliance to infection control or infectious disease specific studies. For the utilization, a copy will be made available upon request to the hospital for their internal audit and review of their policy surveillance and implementation of infection prevention and control measures. And the data will be available to be used as reference for future researches related to the concept. So these are the references. Okay. Apologize for my the noise on the background. For the acknowledgement, of course, we would like to first and foremost thank God Almighty for the grace and wisdom He has bestowed upon us and being 
there as a continuous source of strength. Of course, to our families for their support and prayer, definitely uh, we are indebted to our methods in research professor, Dr. Shai. Dr. Shai Latrahera, thank you very much for the guidance and confidence and of course your knowledge that you have imparted to us. Uh, thank you as well to our dear panel, Dr. Tony Lachica and Dr. Geraldine Abelia, for your suggestions, your wisdom, and of course for approval of our work. And definitely we would like to thank as well the hospital administration for their endorsement. No? Very smooth ang pag endorse nila sang, sang among study. And of course the staff nurses of the tertiary hospital given the um, their busyness, no? they're very busy, they're, and, and yet they still participate in this study. And of course, I would like to thank all of you for your time and for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much. God bless and advance Merry Christmas. Okay, thank you very much, Sir OJ. It is actually heartwarming and um, pride for us to have you with our College of Nursing. So thanks a lot for your humble heart. We will continue with our next presentation um, after being overwhelmed and enriched by the, by the information shared to us by Sir OJ. We're going to uh, continue with our next uh, presenter, uh, Miss Barbie Lim, representing her group okay so let us all welcome miss barbie lim with our warm virtual applause and applause good afternoon everyone um i will be presenting to you a recorded copy of my presentation because initially we were instructed to have it recorded uh, but just to give a backgrounder on uh, on the batch that has actually um, benefited from this study. This was actually the batch that got waited in 2019. So the remaining years that they have been in the community, uh, those uh, the results of the study has been the basis of, of their activities and the programs that they implemented in their community health nursing exposure. Okay, so if I may just share my screen so that I can just play uh, what I have recorded earlier. Here this afternoon to represent our group and present to you the results of the study we conducted in adopted communities where our student nurses had a community health nursing exposure. With me are my other group members, namely Dr. Jocelyn May Flarcadena, Ms. Doro Antiveros, Ms. Estella Isabel Villa, who were with me when we conducted our study entitled Needs Assessment of Community Clients in Purukanahaw and Purukalubay, Barangay Sampinga, August. First, is like we would like to present to you the background of our study. Community health nursing plays a vital role in the delivery of healthcare services in the Philippine healthcare system. It takes an important part in the implementation of health promotion and health prevention programs in community settings. Nurses assigned in these health settings are considered to have a great influence on the people belonging to their scope of care. As mentioned by Honorka in 2013, community health nurses are in the position to assist in the transition of the Philippine healthcare system from a disease-oriented system to a health-oriented system. One of the core functions of the community health nurse is community assessment. It is a logical, systematic approach used in identifying community needs, clarifying problems, and it's identifying more? community strengths. Maybe could, if you could play community because we cannot see the video. Process, which is often used to develop and refine existing programs for better implementation. Presently, the USLS College of Nursing utilizes the basis of COVID as a framework for the implementation of the Community Health Nursing Program. The researchers were prompted to conduct this study regarding needs assessment of clients in Pulukanao and Pulukalubay, Barangay Sampinit, Baptist. 
because the results will guide them in making decisions regarding design, implementation, and Ms. evaluation. Mark, can we please think, uh, share the screen? That will benefit not only the faculty and the students, but especially the people in the community who will be the recipients of the care. Now for the statement of the problem, the purpose of this study is to assess the needs of the community clients in Purok Anahao and Purok Kalubay, Barangay San Pinit, Pago City. More specifically, this study aims to answer the following questions. First, what is the demographic profile of the participants according to age, sex, civil status, means of livelihood, and yes. educational attainment? Second, what are the different needs of community clients in Purok Anahao and Purok Kalubay, Barangay San Pinit, Bago City according to health services? Okay and safety and security third okay um i think um i'm not able to present the okay okay let me just hold on to the Let me just what stop are the sharing. Difficulties and uh, let me just go back to. Okay, just let me just open it up in a different. Okay, Dr. Uh, can I just um, stop sharing first because I need I need to transfer it to another file. Okay. And maybe just um, okay. so before I just play it, Dr. I just need to confirm if you can actually see my screen right now. I can see it now. Yeah. Okay, so can I just play it again? Yeah, you can Actually. see. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the delay, guys. Everyone. I'm here this afternoon to represent our group and present to you the results of the study we conducted in adopted communities where our student nurses had a community health nursing exposure. With me are my other group members, namely Dr. Jocelyn May Flor Cadena, Ms. Dora Antiveros, Ms. Estela Isabel Villa, who were with me when we conducted our study entitled Needs Assessment of Community Clients in Puruk Anahaw and Puruk Kalubay, Barangay San Pinet, Pago City. First, it's like we would like to present to you the background of our study. Community health nursing plays a vital role in the delivery of healthcare services in the Philippine healthcare system. It takes an important part in the implementation of health promotion and health prevention programs in community settings. Nurses assigned in these health settings are considered to have a great influence on the people belonging to their scope of care. As mentioned by Honorica in 2013, community health nurses are in the position to assist in the transition of the Philippine healthcare system from a disease-oriented system to a health-oriented system. One of the core functions of the community health nurse is community assessment. It is a logical, systematic approach used in identifying community needs, clarifying problems, and identifying community strengths and resources. Community needs assessment is part of the planning process, which is often used to develop, improve, and refine existing programs for better implementation. Presently, the USLS College of Nursing utilizes the phases of COVID as a framework for the implementation of the community health nursing program. The researchers were prompted to conduct a study regarding needs assessment of clients in Bulukanao and Bulukalubay, Barangay Sampinet, Bacos. 
because the results will guide them in making decisions regarding design, implementation, and evaluation of the nursing program that will lead to achieving the desired results that will benefit not only the faculty and the students, but especially the people in the community who will be the recipients. Okay. Now for the statement of the problem, the purpose of this study is to assess the needs of the community clients in Purok Anahaw and Purok Kalubay, Barangay San Pinit, Pago City. More specifically, this study aims to answer the following questions. First, what is the demographic profile of the participants according to age, sex, civil status, means of livelihood, and educational attainment? Second, what are the different needs of community clients in Purok Anahaw and Purok Kalubay, Barangay San Pinit, Pago City according to health services, and safety and security. Third, what are the difficulties and challenges encountered by the community clients in availing of health services and establishing of safety and security in the community? For the significance of the study, we have the first one, which is the local government unit of Pago City. The local government unit through the barangay captain and the council may be able to provide assistance by taking into consideration the results of the study during the planning and implementation of projects for that community. Second, Bago City Health Office. The staff of the Bago City Health Office may utilize the results of the study in the planning and implementation of health services that are responsive to the expressed needs of the community clients. Third, the community clients. The community clients of Buruk Anahaw and Buruk Kalubay, Barangay Sampinet, Pago City, who will be the primary recipients of the health services and policies on safety and security of the community. Involving the community clients promotes initiative and participation in improving the health, safety, security of their own community. Next is the faculty members of the USLS College of Nursing. The faculty members of the USLS College of Nursing assign in the community health nursing exposure that they may be able to prepare. Learning activities for the students that are directed in the effective delivery of health services and promote safety and security in the community. And then the last, of course, are the nursing students. The nursing students who are assigned in Puruk Anahaw and Puruk Kalubay, Barangay Sampinit, Pago City, who will be directly involved in the delivery of health care services and promoting safety and security in that community. To guide us in our data gathering and into the different methods and processes that we'll undergo in the course of our study, we have the schematic diagram of the conceptual and operational framework of the study. To give us the demographic profile of the community clients in Puruk Anahaw and Puruk Kalubay, Barangay, Sampinit, Pago City, we first have to identify the following participants in terms of age, sex, civil status, means of livelihood, and educational attainment. Then, we are going to uh, assess the needs of the community clients according to health services and safety and security. Furthermore, to give more meaning and uh, interpretation of the results of the data that was given to us, we are going to also look into the different difficulties and challenges encountered by the community clients in availing of health services, establishing of safety and security through a focus group discussion. With all of this information and data that we are gathering, we are now able to determine the assessed needs of the community clients. For the methods that we have undertaken in the course of our study, the research design that we utilize is a descriptive research design, wherein we are able to gather data that describe the population or the situation. It also facilitated the recognition of prevailing conditions, underlying patterns, traits, and behaviors of the community client. And lastly, provided researchers an opportunity to understand the participant's attitude, reaction, or opinion about certain situations or phenomena. For the participants of the study, we had a total of 80 participants, which is actually a total enumeration of the representatives 
from the adopted families of BS and two students. To continue, our instrument that we utilize is a self-made instrument, which is divided into three parts. First part is about the demographic profile of the participants. Part two is concerns about the health problems, experience, and the health services available to the participants. Part three is about safety and security concerns of the participants and their community. And then we had a separate interview guide, which was utilized during the focus group discussion to determine the difficulties and the challenges encountered by the community clients in the failing of health services and establishing of safety and security in that community. For our data gathering procedure, prior to the conduct of this study, the researchers conducted the courtesy call to the city health officer and the nurse supervisor of Bago City Health Office. At the same time, submitted a letter asking permission to allow the conduct of the study in the identified bureaus. The same procedure was observed for the barangay captain and a letter was also submitted requesting for the approval of the conduct of the study. Furthermore, into the data gathering procedure, we have requested three barangay health workers from the barangay health center to help us and serve as enumerators for the study. They were given an orientation regarding the research instrument and training on how to conduct the interview. The enumerators were also informed of the criteria for the participants who can actually qualify as participants of the study. They were also informed to secure an informed consent prior to the conduct of the interview. For the statistical treatment, frequency distribution and percentage were used in answering questions number one and number two. Then the data was processed through the statistical package for social sciences or SPSS for data analysis. Significant statements of the participants from the focus group discussion were recorded to further validate the quantitative data of the study. For the ethical considerations, all of the participants of the study are of legal age as stated in the selection criteria. With this, an informed consent was sought from each of the participants of the study before the conduct of the interview. The enumerators were oriented not to conduct the interview with the signed informed consent from the participant. The participants were informed that their names will be concealed and will not be included in the study. Finally, for the results of the study, the participants' age ranged from 41 to 60 years of age, which of course would belong to the middle age group. 85% of the participants were female and mostly were mothers and were identified as clients of the students. And we had very few male participants. 70% of the participants are married and most of the identified mothers in the community were high school graduates and the others were technical and vocational graduates and elementary graduates. Most of the participants are self-employed with 80% and with a monthly income falling below 5,000 pesos. The most common source of the participants and their families are related to fishing and working on with products or industries that are C related or products of the sea related. In terms of the health services needs of the community clients, out of the total of 80 participants, 64% of them had family members who got sick in the last six months. Among those who have reported that they have a family who got sick, there was a high incidence of influenza and common colds. Among the participants who had a sick family member had the mother as the main caregiver of the sick member of the family. Now, among all those who got sick or had a family member who got sick in the last six months, 52% see the, the services of a medical doctor, whether in the city health office or in the city hospital, while the others avail the services of private doctors, especially during weekends, through the free consultation located in the, in the city. While the others seek the services of traditional healers like your healer in Manugluia. 
Now, in terms of the most common type of mode of transportation that is being used, 45% of them would utilize motorcycle or tricycle as a mode of transportation to, to a health facility. This, of course, would give us a picture of the accessibility of the health centers or health facility to the community. Among the, uh, the different um, services offered in a local health stations, 64% of the participants of the study availed of the services in a local health station or what we call as your barangay health centers. Among the services offered, those who have six consultation is 41%. 19% availed of free medication for their maintenance medication, 14% complied with immunization of children, and 12% attended health education classes. Now, there, one of the possible reasons that, that why we have a low turnout in terms of immunization, because most of the mothers that, who were interviewed at that time no longer had children who had still receiving immunization but according to them uh, in the earlier years they have complied with the immunization schedule of the children um, in those particular years but also there was also a marked decrease in terms of, com um, of um, compliance in immunization because it was really affected with the case of Deng Baksha so they, they really have lost um, trust in the immunization program of the government Whereas 12% of those who we attended are really those who are interested and have answered to the call of the local health center for availment of health education classes. Now, in terms of safety and security, in terms of food storage, 80% of the participants claim that they do not own a refrigerator, but they keep no, leftover food in containers with cover. Whereas the uh, remaining 20% who owns a refrigerator usually does not use it as storage for food, but rather use it for storage of goods for their sari sari stores. Now, in terms of water supply, we can see that there is a very high uh, usage of purified water. Okay, So most of them would usually avail of purified water for their drinking supply. Now, in terms of garbage disposal, 66% of the participants would usually resort to a creation of compost pit for their garbage disposal. Okay. According to them, segregation is practice, but since there is no collection, so most of them would either resort to the remaining garbage that they have collected, either to burn it or to bury it. Now, also in terms of a housing or the housing facilities within the community, uh, predominantly, um, most of the clients uh, have a mixed type of housing facility, but uh, predominantly are made up of strong materials. Around 14% of the participants of the study has a type of housing facility that has been uh, created in by concrete materials, but usually these are the community uh, participants or clients who have been in the area for so long. And um, in terms of person responsible for conflict resolution, 68% of them would usually seek the help of the barangay captain if there are certain conflicts or issues that needs to be settled within the barangay. Although not mentioned and included in the presentation, um, the people in the community are also aware that they have um, protection against from the Philippine National Police and at the same time also a presence of a fire station within that area. Now for the focus group discussion wherein we utilize uh, certain questions that were uh, used to, to verify you know, some of the areas that um, were not so clear to us. So according to the participants of the study, in terms of the difficulties and challenges encountered by the community clients in availing of the health services and establishing of safety and security, the following areas or areas of concern have been identified. So there were a lot of um, concerns, uh, there were a lot of opinions, and then uh, our group 
has decided to cluster all of this to give us uh, a better view and of course a more um, precise um, concept of their concerns. Number one is limited knowledge on health among community clients. Okay, So some of our uh, participants in the study, according to the core group, the representatives who, who joined us for the core group, there are certain members of the community who seem to have limited knowledge on health, like usage of, of facilities, and uh, also they also have their personal um, differences in terms of health, that even if uh, some of their attentions attention would be called, uh, they would usually have negative reactions to the person who is calling their attention. So one of these common, uh, common problems that they would usually um, uh, encounter, of course, will be um, usage of the first aid kit, which was, of course, uh, one of the initiatives of our students. And um, there is always a source of conflict among that because they have already have established criteria that if you were able to use it, now you are also responsible to be replacing the supplies in that. And that, that seems to be, a, there is, seems to be a gap with that because those who are able to use it does not um, replenish the supplies that they have used. Also, personal preferences on consultation of illness also came in as, as one of their concerns because um, a number of people in the community still seek the services of traditional healers, especially for common ailments such as fever, uh, cough, and uh, body pains or body aches. And then, but according to them, that they usually do this in the first three days of the illness. But if they cannot be managed, they actually seek the uh, services of a medical doctor. Also, a uh, limited access to free medications. Uh, this also, this concern also came up because, according to the participants of the focus group discussion, there seems to be a gap in terms of the. Uh, distribution of medication that sometimes when they come to the center uh, they will not be given the free medications that they need but they notice that some of the medications are actually given to uh, relatives or probably friends of the personnel and uh, usually they just choose who will be receiving these medications also poor compliance to prenatal services also came up because there was also a report that some mothers are quite hesitant to seek prenatal services, especially if they already have multiple children, because they have a hesitation and they don't want their attention to be called by the health personnel. Because according to them, they would often get scolded if they get pregnant again. Also, a negative perception and the effects of immunization, uh, this really came about with the issue on Deng Baksha. So because, of course, no, the information was really shared so much on the news and even in social media that people uh, got to see and uh, read on it. And that is why there was already hesitation on the part of the, of the clients in the community to have their children immunized. That is Uh, there was a decrease in terms of compliance. And lastly is the improper garbage and waste disposal. Again, uh, it was down to because there is an absence of uh, a collection system on the part of the city. And then, of course, the others would also resort to a more easy way out of disposing their waste, which is, of course, burying, which can, of course, cause um, certain respiratory uh, problems for some community members. And also uh, there were some instances also that they called the attention of some community clients because they had to dispose their waste into the sea, which of course is not um, tolerated there because that is a protective uh, area because the community where the students are assigned is actually the site where our Eridwanis are, would often uh, have a lot of sightings in that area. So. Uh, they try as much as possible to make sure that the sea or the beach is often clean and free from any type of contamination. Now for our recommendations, um, in terms of the local government participation with the local government of Bago City, which of course includes the barangay captain, the council, and the group members, to provide capacity building activities to strengthen and improve community leaders in cultivating cooperation and self responsibility among community clients 
for better implementation of community regulations and projects. Also, to assist in the creation of a scheme for our regular garbage collection in Purukanahaw and Purukalubay, Barangay, Sampinit, Bago City. Um, worthy to mention the photos that you actually see on the screen right now are already the initial projects that our students uh, have started based on the initial results that we also shared with them uh, of the study. Uh, this area over here used to be a site for garbage where people would usually dump their garbage. They have converted that into a herbal and a vegetable garden. And also, since we already coordinated with the local government unit, and uh, there seems to be a difficulty of really collecting the garbage uh, really inside the puro. So one of the, the suggestions in the problems that have been worked out with, between the people in the community and the students is that they will create a garbage pit, which will only be located at the side of the highway so that it will be more accessible for the garbage collectors to collect. And, uh, during the last years, last weeks that the students were there, uh, we were informed that um, there was already a regular uh, collection of the garbage. But unfortunately for some of you who are actually traveling to Bago City, you would notice that now it has been moved because it has also been, uh, there is also um, restrictions now of um, infrastructure or any type of forms along the sidewalk no? because of course of the of a new law that uh, would uh, make sure that the sidewalks are clean. For Bago City Health Office to lead in the promotion of advocacy programs to improve awareness on proper garbage and waste disposal and compliance with health programs such as immunization, prenatal care, uh, proper drug use as promoted by the local health center and seeking proper consultation of health conditions to professional medical practitioners to prevent mismanagement and severe complications. Another is to provide an enhanced training for barangay health workers in terms of developing assessment skills in identifying possible clients for referral to local health centers. Third is to establish a referral system to the local health center to identify priority patients in terms of need and availability of resources to eradicate culture of giving preference to individual due to personal and political affiliations. For the community clients, of course, to promote initiative and participation in improving the health, safety, and security needs of their own community. And lastly, for the U.S. as College of Nursing, which of course includes the faculty and the both the student through its HN program to prepare learning activities for the student nurse, uh, student um, that are directly in, in the effective delivery of health services and promotion of safety and security in that community. So that is all for today and these are the references that we use in the course of our study and uh, before I end let me just leave you with a quote from Tom Friedman the way we work in public health is we make the best recommendations and decisions based on the best available data. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you everyone for listening to all. And of course, you can see all those people who have been with us and helping us. Thank you for being with us during our study for the support and the encouragement that you have given us. Thank you everyone for listening and good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Barbie. Uh, we are overwhelmed again by all those learnings that we got from our community and how our students made available themselves and the resources that we have uh, in order that we can help augment the need to improve the community status or health status. So indeed you are right in your last um, uh, slide no? uh, saying that in evidence-based practice, we definitely made, you, made use of data so we can help our community okay, improve their quality of health uh, status and their quality of life. So with that, thank you very much. Um, and you deserve actually our warm applause. Um, uh, next in our um, uh, presentation will be very short um, uh, reactions 
of our participants. So I will be asking uh, Ms. Christine Condes to make a reaction on the presentation by Mr. O.J. Jimenez. And succeedingly, she will be followed by Dr. Leslie Yang who will make a reaction um, on the presentation by Ms. Barbara Lim. Okay, so Ms. Condes. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, Doc. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to my USLS College of Nursing family. So first, of course, congratulations, Sir OJ, group mates, as well as to your advisor, Doc Shi, for another research output or for your research output. And congratulations, Sir OJ, for a quality presentation. Your voice is so clear. The delivery is just so natural. And second, I would like also to comment of how you started your presentation with a strong and convincing introduction. And third, of course, you can see in your PowerPoint how much effort you put in it. Kanami, uh, good some PowerPoint presentation, excellent, good. Another uh, strength, I think, in the presentation also is you were able to provide so many literature that would support the need to conduct that study. You mentioned those significant uh, literature coming from WHO, CDC, as well as, of course, you include uh, local literature, such as you mentioned about budget deficits, corruption, and, of course, our current situation right now which we are all experiencing the pandemic and uh, another thing I would also like to highlight your choice of your theory in your theoretical framework of course all of us nurses we do know uh, Florence Nightingale but how you were able to get the significant uh, part of Nightingale's theory in the application of your research study excellent and then um, for the objectives of the study of course you started with the profiling of the participants and then the compliance on the uh, on infection prevention and control measures and the significant difference on their profile kag sa ila tong compliance but what i guess um nagpas do ano pagid do kumbaga do alaman pagid bala sa nga research study of course is your number four sop which is what would be the suggestions that we can give uh based on this uh study because of course uh we do know that the purpose of conducting research study would always be for us to be able to build and to contribute new knowledge. And uh, for that, because of that research study, we were able to confirm that yes, nurses are still in a high level of compliance with all those uh, precautions, infection and prevention controls. But it's good also that we were able to take note that there is a significant difference when it comes to the area or unit of assignment kagsang level of compliance. So with that, we can say, ah, we can learn if nurses coming from the ward and ER, we can learn from these nurses who are in the ICU or mas high la level of compliance. So again, thank you so much for sharing your research study to all of us. And once again, congratulations. Okay, thank you very much, Christine, for that um, helpful uh, assistance in letting us know the different learnings you got out of the presentations made by Sir OJ. Okay, uh, also we would like to have uh, Dr. Leslie Young next for her presentation uh, on her reaction uh, with Ms. Barbie's presentation. Well, take it away, Dr. Les. Dr. Les, nakamute ka ata. Nakamute. Dr. Les, nakamute ka. Okay, sorry. Good evening, everyone. We are so blessed for the research that we have uh, listened to this afternoon for a wonderful presentation. Congratulations, Sir OJ and team for your interesting presentation. And uh, also congratulations, Miss Barbie and the uh, team, Doc Jo, uh, Miss Te and Miss Dora for a thorough research presentation about community. So I would like to commend the study for two points. First is its relevance. It is but proper that needs assessment be done in order for us to give appropriate care to the people in the community. And this is what we are also teaching our students, especially this semester, because we are uh, teaching CHN to our level two students. So with that, uh, very good. 
because this is uh, always relevant and useful in our community. And whatever recommendations that you had in your study were already uh, started and were already applied. So uh, congratulations. And the second point is its comprehensiveness. So each section of the research paper contains the main points that needs to be included, including the ethical considerations that we need to uh, observe in the conduct of your uh, of our research for future research works and also uh, I would like to appreciate the uh, adding your focus group discussion as an instrument now to validate the responses of the participants in order to shed uh, more light to those vague areas in the responses of the participants so with that uh, congratulations and overall the the <laughs> result of the study was able to give answer to all the statement or objectives that were presented in the uh, first part. So that's all and uh, good evening everyone again. Okay, thank you very much uh, Doc Leslie and Miss Christine and to our presenters, Miss um, Barbie Lim and uh, Sir OJ Jimenez. Uh, we will be ending this afternoon's uh, activity uh, I'm reaching one doc with the message. I, sorry, Doc. Ano lang, Doc? Uh, Ay, yeah. Question doc na lang. No, no. Uh, I know that it, this is not a part of it, no? But uh, I commend the presenters ng Doc. Uh, but uh, so, uh, this is this is my... my ano mong, sorry. Insight? Yeah. Uh, suggestion ng Doc. Naman, naman o blowback ko. Uh, si Sir OJ, probably, if he decides to uh, that up, the research was actually very informative, Doc Shea, no? uh, mo most especially that we are now experiencing this pandemic. Uh, siguro lang ang basi, wala, yan lang na-edit, wala Doc, na-notice ko lang ang statement of the problem ta. It was actually in future 10. So at, at the start, I thought it was actually a proposal uh, that uh, he is uh, presenting. Uh, very minor siya, Doc Shea, but uh, for future uh, presentations, be mindful lang, Sir OJ. Okay, the, the research is actually very informative. Congratulations. Uh, Namiangin ko sang result and uh, mula na. Very minor siya, Doc Shea, but of course, it, it, it may affect bala for future presentations. La. But okay. congratulations to both uh, uh, Sir OJ and Miss Barbie. Thank, Thank you, you, Doc Shea, and congratulations also for taking the lead in our college for all the researches conducted. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder as well. Uh, there are already plans that we will be publishing the paper. Uh, so hopefully it will be accepted. However, uh, I forgot also, if there is any uh, question, maybe we can entertain one or two before we will have the closing remarks with our dean, the College of Nursing. Is there any uh, question so far? Any any question regarding the presentation that you would like to clarify, Po? Okay. Yes, sir, Dean. Do you have any question, Po? Wala na. Dr. Ni? Okay. So, three, two, one. Wala na question. Okay. So, thank you very much for your kind attention. I will be asking our college dean, uh, Dean Ivy Demi, to have his or her closing remark uh, this afternoon. So let us all welcome with a warm hand, a virtual applause, Dean Ivy Demi. Hello, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. Um, uh, to everyone, to the presenters, okay? So, uh, in behalf of the College of Nursing, I would like to say congratulations uh, to the presenters, Ms. Lim and uh, Sir OJ. Thank you for sharing uh, the results no, the results of your study to us. And um, I am looking forward for future um, research activities like this, uh, research colloquiums. And uh, thank you, Doc Shea, for uh, facilitating uh, this uh, research activity. So thank you, everyone, and uh, good evening. Okay, thank you very much, Dean Idemi. Uh, we hope that everyone who has research uh, done will also uh, send me a note so we can schedule.
schedule a colloquium so that we can also invite our students uh, to come with us and that they can learn from you uh, who have done it already. So thank you very much also our dear students for joining us in this collaborative activity. May you have learned okay, from this activity. And thank you very much everyone for your participation. Leave Jesus in our hearts. Forever. Forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Congrats, uh, Sir OJ and Miss Lynn. Bye. Thank bye. you, Dokshi. More colloquial. Oh, thank you, Dokshi. Okay, bye. Sa pagkaon ba? Imaginary lang, imaginary. Bye. Thank you, thank you. Bye.